Welcome to another Jashelle Tech TV Code Music Chill session. Just to recap my previous Code Music Chill videos from recently, if you've been watching, currently I'm working through MDN's web development course. And in this video, I'm wrapping up the last assessment in the HTML structuring the web section of this course. So this is sort of like a hundred days of code kind of thing and also a way to improve my skills and maybe learn some new stuff as well. Also feel free to work along with me in any of these videos if you're doing a hundred days of code like me or just want to learn something new or maybe you're learning web development for the first time. Feel free to work with me, share your code. All the links are in the description if you want to check it out. But Feel free to just hang out, chat, and watch. So let's get into today's project. So today I'm doing the Structuring Planet Data Project. In our table assessment, we provide you with some data on the planets in our solar system and get you to structure it into an HTML table. HTML tables, yay! Just kidding. Sort of. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> So it's basically to test comprehension of HTML tables and associated features. And they also give us a live example of it as well. So this is basically what it's supposed to look like. So it has to be built with HTML tables. So that's gonna be fun, right? <laughs> right? Am I right? Okay. This is serious, okay? All right, structuring planet data with tables is tons of fun. And it says, no, no looking at the source code, don't cheat. So, you know, yeah, so they're serious, they're serious. So for the steps to complete, the following steps describe what you need to do to complete the table example. All the data you'll need is contained in the planets data, planets-data.txt file. So they give us the steps to complete as well as the hints and tips to help out with the project. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that I pretty much just make my own checklist and I take the requirements out of the steps and everything and I put them into a checklist um, just to make it a lot easier to go through. So, so I can easily make sure that I've met all the minimum project requirements. So it's good to do even, you know, at work and stuff, you know, have a little checklist, a little project checklist. It's a little more simplified than like a Kanban board because we obviously don't need that for something as simple as this. So the best thing to do, of course, starting out is to make a local copy of the project. So I'll need to head over to the MDN repository to grab these. I'll actually need to do it one by one because um, I don't want to clone their entire learning repository. So the first file is blank template.html. So I'm going to copy that. And save. The second file is minimal table.css. So this this is the CSS file. And then the last one is planetsdata.txt. Okay, so I have all the files necessary to go ahead and get started with the structuring. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch the live server. Move it over here. So again, on the left side is, is what they want us to build. And on the right side is what we have now. So basically nothing but a header and it goes all the way over here to the right, but um, I want to keep both screens up so that we can see them as I'm updating everything. I have a really big screen, but um, still, it's not big enough. <laughs> they never are, are they? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay. 
Okay, the simplest thing to do would be to go ahead and change the header, the H1 to planets data, since, you know, that would make sense to do. So I'm gonna do that. So there we have it. And I'll also change the title as well, because it looks like the title up here, they got that changed as well to planets data. Can you guys see that? I'm not gonna actually know that until I upload the video, but just make it bigger just in case. Okay, so on the checklist it says, open your copy of blank template.html and start the table off by giving it an outer container, a table header, and a table body. You don't need a table footer for this example. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here. To create a new table, I'll just use the table element. That's how you start off a new table in HTML. And then they want you to create a header. So for a table header, it's the T head element, which makes sense, table head. And then a table body. So to create a table body, you use the T body element. Boom. All right, so I'll go ahead and check that check. Check that check, okay. So the next is to add the provided caption to your table. And if you're not familiar with adding captions to tables, so you can give your table a caption by putting it inside a caption element and nesting that inside the table element. And you should put it just below the opening table. So basically, I'm gonna, so I'll come down after table, add the caption. And the caption is, I can grab that actually out of the TXT file, should be able to. Yeah, so right here I can copy that, paste it nicely into the caption element. So if I go ahead and take a look at my planets data file, we got something going there. Not exactly what we need, but it's a start, right? Okay, so I can, check out the caption check. So for the next checklist item, we're gonna be adding a row to the table header containing all the column headers. And you know what, I do apologize. I T body is actually supposed to go be below the header, not nested within it. Oopsies. <laughs> all right, I caught that when on this one we're, as we're supposed to be adding all the column headers to the header. So basically what they mean is the column headers up here at the top. And so these, we have to create a row to create those and get those started. So inside of T head, table head, I'll go ahead and create a table row, which is TR. And also on the hints, under the hints, it says that the first cell of the header row needs to be blank and span two columns. So. As you can see here on the left, yeah, it's a blank, it's blank and it does span two columns. So if you did need to make a cell, a table cell span more than one column, um, they have an example here on MDN. So table headers and cells have the call span and row span attributes, which allow us to do just that. And both of them accept a unit list number value, which equals the number of rows or columns you want span. For example, call span equals two, which that's pretty much what we need right there. Call span two. So I'll come down below our new row and add a TD, which stands for table data. And there is also an article for that on MDN. Um, so the smallest container inside a table is a table cell, which is created by a TD element. TD stands for table data. So. A little nugget, if you didn't know that. A little chicken nugget. I like barbecue sauce. On, do I like barbecues? I haven't eaten chicken nuggets in a while, so actually, you know what? Chick-fil-A sauce. This is not a sponsorship or anything, but I think I would do Chick-fil-A sauce on the nuggets. But we're talking about code, excuse me. Um, where was I? Table data, right. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go um, under the new row and again, if we take a look at the example, we'll want our um, our first cell to span two, was it two columns? Yeah, span two columns. So I'll add an attribute call span, give it a value of two. So we do need to go ahead and create all the column headers. So that's name, mass, diameter, density, gravity, et cetera, et cetera. Also, I think the easiest thing to do here would be to 
just paste in a bunch of table headers. By the way, TH is table header. Um, and they're going to automatically be bold because that's ta table header automatically makes the headers bold. So I'll just go ahead and would that be best or nope actually this will be easier because they already have the superscripts there for us all generously so I would need to add that in so I'll just put the th is in Isn't table-based coding fun? HTML tables, it's so fun. Okay, so all of the headers are in there and I know they're correct because I pasted it from MDN's text file, so. I'm not gonna worry about spelling. I just wanna make sure it's right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and see what we're working with here. All right, it's looking good, looking good. Okay, so we got our columns there. Also, I forgot to mention, MDN also has an article on table headers. If you wanna check it out, if you wanna get more information on table headers, but there's special cells that go at the start of a row or column and define the type of data that row or column contains. So it just makes the table a lot easier to read and it's not required, but uh, they have a table without using TH um, table header. And you know, it's just a little bit easier to read if you use that. So um, as you can see on our table, it'll, it just makes the, it just helps you to understand what we're looking at, what, what kind of data you're looking at on each column. Okay, and then the next step is, of course, create all content rows inside the table body, remembering to make all row headings into headings semantically. So this is gonna be on the left-hand side, terrestrial planets, Jovian planets. Is, is the J silent? Is it Hovian or Jovian? Anyway, um, and then you got subcategories, gas and ice giants, and then dwarf planets. So we have to create not only that, but we also have to look at the fact that there are, there's a second row of headers here. So we must also take that into account in the, in the table design. So I've got to come down to T body and go ahead and start a new row and then a new header for terrestrial planets. And then since terrestrial planets, um, since the first cell up here spans a column, spans two columns, I also need to add that to the cells below it as well. And for the second row, the hints mention that the group row headings, Jovian planets that sit to the left of the planet name row headings are a little tricky to sort out and you need to make sure each one spans the correct number of rows and columns. So how I visualize this is I see that Jovian planets spans a total of four rows because it, you can see that it from top to bottom, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. So that definitely spans four and then gas giants spans two and ice giants span two because you can see from top to bottom Jupiter and Saturn, ice giants, Uranus and Neptune. So that's how I visualize it to see um, how I need to design the table. Before I move on, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rows to the right of terrestrial planets. Um, so Mercury, Ven v Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, because it'll be better to do that first before moving on because things will get real weird around here. <laughs> in this design. So I'm gonna go under terrestrial planets, add a new header for Mercury. So you can see Mercury is, right, is there lined up. 
And then what I'll need to do is come down and add a new row, a new header for Venus. But you see Ven Venus is dropped down to the next row and that's because terrestrial planets, um, we also need to add an additional attribute of row span so that it'll span those four rows instead of just one. So, so what I'll need to do is add row span and um, it'll be a span of four. So now Venus goes to the goes to the right, and then we'll be able to add the other two as well. So for Earth and Mars, I just need to do the same thing <clears throat> as Venus. So I'll start a new row, and then another header for Earth. Save. So Earth is lining up nicely. And then one more row for Mars. Okay, so we got our terrestrial planets here lined up nicely. So now we're moving on to Hovian planets. And so for that, I'm going to start a new row, a new header for Hovian planets. So again, Hovi did I say Hovian? I'm sorry. Jovian. Oh, I think I Jovian. Okay. Jovian planets. Thank you. Google. All right. Jovian planets. Again, how I visualize it, it's spanning four columns over here. I mean, four rows over here. So, I'm going to give it an I'm going to add the attribute row span of four so then i'll go ahead and add in gas the two subcategories gas giants and ice giants so I'll, co I'll come below jovian planets and add a new header and it's gas giants and gas giants spans two rows so Add row span two. So yeah, it's looking like it's supposed to. And the only thing we need to do now is add ice giants. So I'm gonna come below and add a new row, a new header for ice giants. And that's gonna span two rows. So it is behaving properly, but now the planets just need to be added then to align it like we need it. So for gas giants, I'll go ahead and add Jupiter and Saturn. So I'll add a new header for Jupiter and then add a new row for Saturn. And under ice giants, I'll go ahead and add a new header and then that'll be for Uranus and then a new row for Neptune. So I'll go ahead and save that. So now you see the the two subcategories for Jovian planets, and then you see um, the different ca the planets actually lining up with their appropriate category. And Jovian client Jovian planets is. A lot is spanning the four rows so the only other thing left to do is add the dwarf planets row and Pluto so for dwarf planets um, it'll be the same so dwarf planets does need to span um, two columns just like um, just like terrestrial planets and then the blank cell above that so I'll come down add a new row add a new header Dwarf planets, span it two columns, save that, looks good, and then add one new row for Pluto, save that. Okay, so let me try this, looks like it went to the next row, so one thing I did was um, for dwarf planets, I also did... Um, a row span of two 
because it it goes to that next row so um so I'm, I'm gonna make it span two rows and see what that does it should work yeah so so now that's lined up like it should be so the next one I'm gonna just go to the next one add a black border just around the column that contains all the planet name row headers so um, there's a black border over here and there's a couple of ways to do this there's an easy there's an easy way and an easier way well I'm gonna say one is actually just more tedious and just more work whereas another one is less work so MDN provides those examples so the first example it kind of just talks about how you would have to put it put a style on each put us put the style attribute on each cell so basically you would do something like name let's see what does it look like name border border top left right black mercury border left right venus but then imagine if we had like thousands and thousands and thousands of like data on here like what if it was names of students or something like that that wouldn't be fun unless you just did it with CSS, but um, MDN for table coding, it says HTML has a method of defining styling information for an entire column of data all in one place, the call and call group elements. These exist because it can be a bit annoying and inefficient having to specify styling on columns. You generally have to specify your styling information on every TD or TH in the column or use a complex selector such as nth child, nth dash child. So um, I pretty much skipped right over that because why would I work harder if I don't have to? So this isn't ideal as we have to repeat the styling information across all three cells in the column. We probably, or in this case, all of these we probably have a class set on all three in a real project and specify the styling in a separate style sheet. So I'm going to use a method called styling with call. So we can specify the information once on a call element. Call elements are specified inside a call group container just below the opening table tag. And so you it would create the same effect as this would, but less work again. <laughs> so it would look something like this. So I would come over to go up to the table element come down and add a call group add the call group element to create that column group and so what this is how i visualize this is you're basically targeting columns so when you create that call group um inside of that element you'll add as many columns as you need or as many cols like that as you need until you target what you need so the first the first col has to span two columns since all the cells in the first row span two columns otherwise it won't work properly if we just kept it at col um i'll just see if i'll just see if i can make an, a quick example out of it but if i added the style tag and then a border of one of like three px three pixels black pick solid black so that's basically what will happen you can kind of see here that borders the borders only going around the first column so if I would let's say I did want to target you know the whole row over here like the whole these different planets and all that the type of planets then I would have to span it um, MDN talks about um, sp the span attribute so just like call span and row span span takes a unit list number value that specifies the number of columns you want the styling to apply to so when using call group in the col element you would just use span to let it know how many columns it needs to span and once i save it so now you can see it's spanning the first two columns here and you can even see the line go in between these two because this is still this is two columns but it's just split 
but in this case we want to add a black border just add the black border to this third column technically over here so if we want to target the third column I'll go ahead and remove that out of the way Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> just added a whole bunch of crap I don't need <laughs> um, take that out so we're gonna keep the call span too but we're gonna target the second one, the second column. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save that. See, now it's applied it to that entire column and I only had to add a couple of lines of code to target it. So, pretty simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and check off adding the black border and so now it's just a matter of, it would just be a matter of going ahead and adding in all the table data. So that's pretty awesome and fun, right? <laughs> all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the music play and I'm gonna speed it up a little bit, speed the video up a little bit as I'm adding this. But if you wanna actually watch the coding process, feel free to slow the video down or something like that if you want, or come back and watch it later. <laughs> the laugh I do when I have to do the HTML tables. And just a little info on what I'm doing. If you're new to HTML or table coding or anything like that, um, basically what I'm gonna do at this point is fill in each, fill in the data for each planet. And what that will consist of is, so I'm gonna go down to where Mer Mercury is right now and pretty much I just need to add um, a new cell, a bunch of new cells. But the thing is, what's great about this is they've actually provided us the data inside of the TXT file. So I'm actually just going to, for each uh, row, I'll just put in the data like so. I think that rhymed. And so basically I'll just wrap each piece of data in a TD, which means table data. And then I'll just put each piece of data inside of the cell. When I save this, <laughs> you can see that the data is now in there. And it matches what's in the table. So I'll be doing this for each row, pure HTML, pure HTML tables. So here we go.
okay so all the data is now in the table and it looks like it needs to look so basically just copied over the data from the txt file and it looks good i got everything in there it's styled the way it needs to be. It looks like my border is a little bit thicker than the, the border that they have. So I am going to, instead of three pixels, I guess I'll make it two pixels. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So the checklist for ensure all content is placed into the right cells and the raw data, each row of planet data is shown next to its associated planet, done. Our job is done. So um, the next one for adding um, attributes to make the row and column headers unambiguously associated with the rows, columns, or row columns that they act as headings for. And then the hint that goes with that is one way of associating headers with their rows, columns is a lot easier than the, than the other way. So it's talking about making the table more accessible. And MDN actually talks about two ways to do this. So it's basically talking about tables for visually impaired users. A table can be a handy tool for giving us quick access to data and allowing us to look up different values. To understand its information, we make visual associations, of course, between the data in this table and its columns and or row headers. But what if you can't make those visual associations? How can you read a table like the above? Visually impaired people often use a screen reader that reads out information on web pages to them. This is no problem when you're reading plain text, but interpreting a table can be a, quite a challenge for a blind person. Nevertheless, with the proper markup, we can replace visual associations by programmatic ones. So the first method is using the scope attribute. And this is actually a pretty simple one. Um, basically, um, it can be added to the TH element to tell screen readers exactly what cells the header is for. Is it a header for the row it's in or the column? So for example, you would just add the scope COL, which is column, and each row could have a header defined like this if we added row headers as well as column headers. So what happens is screen readers will recognize markup structure like this and allow their users to read out the entire column or row at once. And then also scope has two, two more possible values, call group and row group. And these are used for headings that sit over the top of multiple rows or columns. So to better visualize this, there's I'm, gonna, I'm actually just gonna pull up an example because the example actually helped me visualize it. I think accessibility is pretty important. I mean, yeah, okay, um, you know, the person that can see can see a table, but you know, I always, I love just the fact that MDN includes that type of information um, because some courses I've taken, I mean, I've never really taken a course outside of coding bootcamp, but um, I just love how they incorporate accessibility into their course which is why I'm such a big fan of this it's not just taking you through how to make a table but it's saying hey but what if somebody who is uh, visually impaired can't read your table where we'll do this so this is why I love this so with using the scope attribute so over so over to the left you can see the scope is call group and what that's saying is close is a call a column group because it's it groups what's below that trousers skirts dresses trousers is a column skirts is a column dresses is a column under the group of clothes so in the in mdn it says clothes the clothes cell sits above the trousers skirts and dresses all of these cells should be marked up as headers but clothes is a heading that sits over top and defines the other three subheadings clothes therefore should get an attribute of call uh scope equals call, call group whereas the others will get an attribute of scope equals call 
So you're labeling it based on what it is and that'll help the screen reader know what it is and know how to call it out to the user. The second method is the ID and headers attribute. So basically what you would do is add a unique ID to each TH element. You add a headers attribute to each TD element. Each headers attribute has to contain a list of the IDs of all the TH elements that act as a header for that cell separated by spaces. And this will give your HTML table an explicit definition of the position of each cell in the table. I sound like I was rapping. This gives your H this gives your HTML table an explicit definition of the position of okay. <laughs> Alright, of each cell defined by the headers for each column and row it is part of, kind of like a spreadsheet. And so for it to work well, the table really needs both column, both column and row headers. And this method creates very, very precise associations between, between headers and data cells, but it, but it uses a lot more markup and does not leave any room for errors. The scope approach is usually enough for most tables. So if you want to go simple, you know, use scope, but if you want to be honestly, this, the ID and headers attribute is a lot easier for me to visualize. And I'll show you an example. Cause I actually tried it out on code pen, um, recently and you'll see why it's a lot easier for me to visualize this, like how it would be for a person with a screen reader. So I would add an, an ID for clothes and everything would just have an ID accessories, trousers, skirts, or whatever's in your table. It would just give it an ID that describes what's in there. And then what you do for when you get to the actual data, so you see 56 on the right over here and you see 56 on the left. So what you have to do is target exactly what that 56 is talking about. What like, what is that? What data is that connected to? So it's connected to, first of all, clothes, trousers, Belgium, Antwerp so that is very specific so that is very precise and that's why I said it's a lot easier for me to visualize that so but you can see that it's a lot more a lot more markup as it says so your code will look something like that it's good to know this It's good to know that you can do this if we go to 72 you see that it has the headers now headers is gonna be the attribute I forgot to mention that um, so it's letting you know that the attri the header, the headers that it's targeting is accessories, bracelets, Belgium, Antwerp. And you just, whatever it's targeting, whatever headers it's targeting, the cell is connected to are the ones you're going to add into that for the values for that. So HTML is done. And then, um, I'll be doing, looks like there's four different sections for CSS. So what I'm going to do for that is kind of this, basically the same thing. I'll go through each, each section and then I'll go through the assessment for each one. If there is an assessment, there's, I guess there is, but anyway, I'll, any kind of assessment or anything I'll learn. If I, if it's something new, I learn, I pretty much just uh, write about it in a blog post. Um, and I also just take notes, but if there's an assessment, um, I just find it way more fun to do videos for those. Um, and then after CSS, there's JavaScript and web forms and more fun stuff. So I'll probably be doing this for the rest of the year. Just kind of hanging out in this course, learning a lot of new stuff, writing and doing content. So, um, and I'm also, uh, pushing up my code to GitHub. So if you find yourself doing this course, feel free to compare notes and let me know what you come up with all right so my updated code is here on github and yeah um let me know let me know what you think of this course if you're doing this course as well and that is all for tonight's because it's now nighttime here it's 10 51 p.m so <laughs> mountain standard time of course thanks for attending another code music chill session with Jashelle tech tv and hope to see you all in the next one bye